Welcome to Climbing Simulator 4. You'll climb in the heat, you'll climb in the rain, you'll climb as a small child, you'll climb everything except this 45 degree ledge. I honestly think I could climb this in a pair of flip flops. This is Nathan who's the protagonist. We're currently in Africa looking for pirate treasure. This involves wholesome outdoor activities such as four wheel driving up muddy hills, exploring ancient structures and of course the perpetual murder of anyone who gets in our way. A lot of people get in our way. Nathan is now the leading cause of death in Africa coming in above AIDS and starvation. Not bad for a suburban husband. We reach a temple where we think the treasure might be. Using teamwork, Nathan and his brother burst in together and we head further into the structure. There's a statue of Jesus and Nathan proceeds to give him a ripe old fondle. Nothing hotter than crucifixion I guess, I mean the structure begins exploding as enemies rappel down on top of us. These guys are part of an elite South African militia group. Fortunately, they're about as accurate with their weapons as I am when I take a leak at the pub. We kill them all. Everyone knows a special force platoon is no match for three middle aged white guys who love rock climbing. My brother Sam starts looting the corpses. A wallet and an iPhone is a good silver medal to pirate treasure I suppose. We find a map in the temple and realise the treasure must be at one of these marked towers and so we split up to search them. Splitting up is always a great idea. We head to a small town where one of the towers is located. I see some men huddled around a vehicle. How many Africans does it take to fix a car? I imagine one could do it if they were mechanically qualified. I make my way down into the bustling market and see a man selling pool floaties. Real funny mate, you should be selling chairs. Do you know how bad it is for your joints to squat like that all day? We're also travelling with this old guy and he proceeds to drop some game on one of the local girls. Oh, I am sorry. I, here, let me help you. You see the way she looked at me? <laughs> you are delusional. I don't think so. Sidi Malaka. We're here to find pirate treasure while he's trying to find an African child bride. This game has so many cool things happening like these guys painting a wall. It's so satisfying seeing actual paint get painted. I think I need to go outside more. I head down into an alley and in the dumpster I find a trinket but it's clearly just a dirty broken mug. Maybe we can wash it and make some tea. I don't know it feels like it was in the rubbish for a reason. How on earth is this a collectible? I buy myself an apple. I'll tell you guys something quite strange about me. I have mullus domesticophobia, which is a fear of apples. Like if someone eats one in front of me, I get physically sick and I get goosebumps all over my body. It's so weird. On one of my first dates with Anna, she ate an apple in front of me and I asked her to stop, but she didn't. So I slapped it out of her hand. Sounds like I'm joking, but I hate apples almost as much as I hate black people suffering. This old guy we're with is busy shopping for t-shirts and I just feel like we don't have time for this. We need to find treasure. I get that African tailors are some of the best and most affordable, but we've got a job to do. We reach the tower and how on earth will we get in? Surprisingly, we're going to climb up the structure. I begin skillfully navigating the narrow ledges. It's impressive, or at least it was until I realized the old guy was doing it too. Really undervalues Nathan's skill set. I climb to the top of the tower with ease and then ring the bell. We ring it hard and we ring it true and then the clock tower begins collapsing. We proceed to fall down, smacking our head multiple times, but everyone knows a tuck and roll can easily mitigate an 100 foot fall onto solid concrete. We discover a pirate tomb and a puzzle must be solved for the next hint. I rotate some squares and after a while it reveals a map that leads us to a tropical island. Our rival who's commanding all these soldiers calls up and he's being a real dick. He's mad we killed 50 of his men. Cry me a river and then use that river to hydrate these people. He's like, by the way, I'm tracking your phone. Nathan smashes it up, which is extremely wasteful, especially here. Someone would have happily eaten that phone. We hop in our Jeep and flee the area. I take a shortcut through the fresh local produce market and destroy everything. First the public gunfights and now this. We truly are the worst thing to happen to Africa. Our rivals have armored cars with 50 caliber machine guns pursuing us. So I'm just like, hold the wheel gramps. And I just swing onto this truck's crane suspended in the air. This was a great decision. I'm then dragged behind the vehicle, somehow not being torn to shreds. Pretty sure this is what the Taliban do to people who call them rude names, but Nathan's just fine. I just casually shoot everybody while being dragged along. Don't overthink it. We escape our pursuers and get back to our hotel room. Waiting for us is my wife. She's upset that we've become a mass murderer. Nathan now has to choose between the thing he loves most in this world and this corner store hoe. So we get in the boat and we keep looking for treasure. The clues lead us to a tropical island. Basically, this pirate captain has left a treasure trail and we have to follow it along. On the island, I noticed someone's been tied to a post so that when the tide rises, they would drown. At least your corpse would have a nice sun-kissed tan, I guess. Nathan proceeds to whip out his princey little journal and draw the corpse. This man is deeply disturbed. I find some well-hidden clues that point me in the right direction. 16 years of climbing later and solving various puzzles leads us to a statue of the pirate captain himself. A violent storm starts rolling in, yet we still take the time to draw the statue. Nathan's out here butchering South Africans when he should be an art major. That is some abstract beauty. 
I surprisingly have to climb the statue, and when I look through the periscope, it points to another island. We decide to take our boat through the storm because that usually goes well for people, and I'm thrown overboard. Eventually, I wash up on the shore, and it's quite the monsoon. We make a shelter and wait out the rough weather. Just kidding, we climb. This game really teaches you that there is no problem climbing can't solve. For example, imagine you wanted to have a birthday party that's both active and fun. Go rock climbing. See, there is literally no problem it can't solve. I climb all night and eventually find my brother. He tells me the South African militia group have flown in an entire platoon to find the treasure first. I'm guessing they used his forehead as the runway. We make our way further into the jungle and discover the secret pirate village known as Libertalia. It just reminds me of the term libtard. If there's one thing Naughty Dog can do, it's perfectly create cities that have become overgrown. The environments in this game are insane, especially as you often just spend a few minutes in each one. Nathan and Sam start role-playing drinking at the pub with empty cups. I'm pretty sure both of these brothers are clinically insane. Hopefully buried along with the treasure is a few lithium tablets and some antipsychotic medication. We continue exploring the city, but are attacked by those pesky soldiers. I got attacked a couple of years ago in real life. I was driving to my girlfriend's aunt's house for a healthy home-cooked meal. On the way, this geezer starts tailgating me, and so I do the mature thing and flip him off. This awakened the Kraken, and this dude starts driving even more like a maniac. He was riding my ass so hard, he was basically touching my back bumper. So I turn off into Anna's aunt's street, and he follows me. I knew I couldn't show him where she lives, so I pull over onto some dirt on the side of the road. I open my door and look back, and this tiny man exits his vehicle. Beer cans come out with him, and this dodgy malacca has like three teeth. I'm thinking, oh shit, I've just pissed off a crackhead, and so I quickly shut my door. This man closes the gap between our two cars so quickly. Imagine Usain Bolt, and then imagine Usain Bolt on crack. Luckily, I was driving a 2010 Holden Cruze CDX diesel sedan, arguably the best car on the market, and most importantly, it still had those locks that you could push down manually. I managed to slam down the lock with my elbow as he goes for the door handle and save myself just in time. There was this brief moment where we looked into each other's eyes and I thought to myself, okay, the situation is handled. Then this man just starts punching my window and kicking the door, so I drive off with haste. I look into the rear vision mirror and he's on his hands and knees crawling around. To this day, I don't know why he was crawling, but I'll tell you what would have helped us both calm down. Two hours of rock climbing at our local rock climbing center. We reach the top of the city, and in the distance, I see Captain Avery's house, which is where the treasure should be. Ten minutes after finding this glorious hidden ancient city, we begin destroying it as the fight with the militia group continues. These soldiers have the worst aim in the world. Worse than stormtroopers. These guys couldn't hit their wives. Absolutely nothing can defeat these two ambitious brothers. Nothing except one empowered black woman. She's back. She proceeds to kick our ass for two minutes straight, it's kind of hot. I fall out the window and dangle on this rope, but apparently I take too long and she chokes out Sam and kills him. I think I'm in love with an NPC. Just kidding, Sam lives via a checkpoint, but then the whole enemy crew rocks up and are like, haha, we got you. I proceed to fall off a cliff and smash my face on a rock as I come down. There is no way anyone could have possibly survived that. I lie there still and lifeless for six seconds like I was a girl losing her virginity and then suddenly my braless wife comes in with snacks to save me. She came all the way out to this island, kind of desperate. I immediately attempt to execute her but I'm sadly not allowed to which makes a lot of sense as it would ruin the story. I get excited to show my wife just how good I am at climbing but she's equally as good. I'm starting to feel like everyone in this game is incredibly good at climbing. She can even hold my entire body weight with her fingers. While I'm swinging on some pirate monkey bars, I'm attacked by soldiers and my wife chokes one to death in cold blood with her bare hands. The future mother of my children is murdering Africans, you tell me that's not a red flag. We find a jeep and begin driving around the island, looking for the precious treasure and it would also be good to save our brother Sam. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, hey Pelican, tell me more about your 2010 Holden Cruze CDX diesel sedan. Well, I purchased the car many years ago secondhand, and I've been driving it ever since. It's got rear vision mirrors, electric windows, and a steering wheel. I know what you're thinking. You want to see a photo. Well, like the video if this is the nicest whip you've ever seen in your life. I continue forging forward with wifey. If it wasn't for all the mass graves and people in small cages, then this island would actually be pretty romantic. We head down into the crypts of this ancient city, and it appears the pirate captain has sorted each cavern into a different type of body part. So in this room, it's the hands of his enemies, and in this room, it's the rib cages of his enemies, all neatly sorted out into bags. The tomb begins exploding, and we have to run away Crash Bandicoot style. A nice little nod to that OG game. We tumble some distance down, but fall damage is clearly not a factor in this world. 
My wife then dies, which honestly, I'm not too mad about. She's super clingy. She was just kidding though. What a f***ed up joke to pull. People are dying everywhere. Surrounded by ancient war crimes, hate crimes, and desecrated corpses, we share an intimate kiss. This couple has deep, deep issues. We find the pirate's fleet of ships, along with Sam, who's being chased by an entire army. The worst I've ever been chased was when I was a child. My mate and I were indulging in some knock and runs. As a kid, it was always a classic laugh, seeing some old guy lose his shit as he answered the door for the fifth time in 20 minutes. There was this one rich guy's house we loved to hit because he'd always scream at us and other neighbors would come out to see what the commotion was. This one time, an attractive girl came out in a towel to see what he was screaming about, and it was the highlight of my 14th year on this earth. I still consider her the one that got away. This one night, we knock and run on his house and rush next door to where our friend lived to hide in his garden. We thought our friend was overseas with his family, but as we ran into my friend's backyard, we noticed his door was open and we could hear people inside. So this old geezer that we've been annoying for two hours calls the cops on us. The cops come and he tells them we're hiding next door. The cops arrive and we rush and climb over the back fence, but I come down on my knee wrong and tear my meniscus. I was hurt bad, so I hobble to the closest bush and just jump in, hoping that I'm hidden. It turns out the front door was open because that house was being robbed and we watched the police arrest these two guys. They probably went to prison because we played a silly game. I ended up needing a knee reconstruction because of the fence injury, but at least we saved the day. The moral of the story is, practice climbing. We kill dozens more guards. Remember, we're the good guys. Everyone in our crew is amazingly still alive. We decide to go home, but then my brother Sam is like, nah blood, I'm getting that treasure, and he scurries off. I have to follow Sam, and the only way to catch him is with a long climbing segment. Like a really long climbing segment. It felt like we had really built up to a final showdown, but no, first you climb some more. Eventually we reach the captain's pirate ship, which is where the treasure must be. Sure enough, it is. Our rival shows up and wants to have a sword fight. Not the fun kind you have with your buddy on a drunken night, the serious kind. Unfortunately, the only thing Nathan is better at than climbing is apparently sword fights. I crush our rival Raf with the treasure, hooray for metaphors. Sam and I then swim away empty handed. Maybe the real treasure is all the South Africans we murdered along the way. We fade to many years later and it appears Sam is now a 12 year old girl. Good on him for wanting to be himself. Somebody give this lass an award for something. No, she is clearly the daughter. No better way of showing the conclusion to this mystical tale than through the eyes of a 12 year old girl years after the events took place. The moral of the story is you don't need treasure to be happy. Although surely you go back and get the treasure. We spent an entire game finding it. I would grab my snorkel, rent a tinny and head on out there. That's generational wealth. You could buy the island. New second channel video, search Papa Pelly on YouTube. We, we managed to do it boys. Right. Sometimes close. it's the little things in life. That was so funny to me. Anyway, sick game. I rate it very highly. I hope you're all doing well. Hit like if you enjoyed. I love you.